Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Borto manga review. This one's going to be for chapter 36, which is called Surprise Attack. So uh, yeah, we have the official translation out already. Uh, this seems to be the main result of the switch of Boruto from Shonen Jump into uh, V-Jump. Is that actually the chapter on, um, you know, the viz.com actually is released like a, a day or two early. So that's pretty interesting. But uh, yeah. We continue on with another, I think, very, very good chapter of Boruto. The last two or three have been very good. Uh, I don't think this one is quite as, like, just uh, monumental, like, just riveting in a way as some of the details that we got in the last few chapters. But if not just for the fact that Jigen arrives on the scene and it seems like this naruto Jigen fight is happening right now, this chapter is very, very, very eventful, so, you know... It's, it's eventful in the, in the sense of like those kind of surprise moments. The detail is more of kind of setup type stuff happening. But anyway, that's what we get. We obviously had uh, Borto and Mitsuki kind of uh, on their way to figure some stuff out. But Borto suddenly like falls. He slips on a branch. The, the typical thing that ninjas have no problem doing, he falls off. It's then realized that um, Borto's karma has actually activated and that has sort of caused the, the slip in a way. And it's him noticing this that me means he realizes that, okay, there's a connection to other karma marks, so that must mean Kawaki has activated it somehow, and that's activated Borto's. So we sort of alerted to the fact that something is going on. We then cut back to um, Kawaki and Naruto back at the house. Uh, Kawaki is looking for the last piece of the uh, vase to fix it because it has a leak, and we just get a nice little... Um, you know, piece of dialogue here between Naruto and Kawaki about Kawaki being more focused on the specifically fixing the the vase because it like it's not fixed because the vase only works if it doesn't leak. Whereas Naruto is more trying to get across the idea of the effort you put in to fix it this far is you you know, you solved the problem that kind of came up here in all of this. The last piece you think it matters, but really it doesn't because um you know, you sort of solve the issue relating to the fact that you broke the vase in the first place. But I think they're trying to create a sort of like, you know, symbolism kind of thematic thing here about Kawaki and like, ultimately like we know where he goes. So I think him falling at the last hurdle of the vase not fully being able to be fixed, him not fully being able to go on, just be part of Naruto's family, is going to be this important thing going forward. That he's this close, but because of that last piece being missing, he's kind of pulled back in the other direction, and that's kind of signified here with the arrival of Jigen on the scene. And we then actually cut to a pretty interesting scene here with uh, Shikadai and Inojin basically talking about Kawaki uh, and if they should trust him or not. Um, Inojin basically brings up the fact that, you know, his father sighs in um, kind of Anbu Black Ops, so, you know, he's suspicious of kind of everything to a degree. Uh, and, you know, uh, Shikadai kind of notes that, like, yeah, yeah, my, my, my dad's kind of like, you know, Eno, they're very, they're very on guard about this whole thing. But Shikadai says, personally, uh, I like Kawaki. I, I think he's a straight shooter. And Inojin's just like, yeah, I hope you're right. So I think that seems mainly to get across the idea that, in general, Kawaki has got to the point over these last bunch of chapters where a lot of people are sort of turning the corner on him. They are really beginning to trust him. Uh, even beyond just directly Borto, the adults of the village, the other kids, are really beginning to actually like warm up to him a little bit and not be overly suspicious. And these things are going right for him, and then it's going to be completely interrupted here. Uh, we then cut, I actually like these really quick scenes just cutting between characters. We get a, a lot of little bits and pieces covered in this chapter, which I like. So we cut to Ino and Sakura in the flower shop. And Sakura is buying flowers because she's really, really, really happy that uh, Sasuke is coming home. Um, and Ino kind of teases her about it and kind of notes that, like, I wouldn't accept that from my husband of, like, him rarely being home. But the one thing I kind of um, am a bit envious of Sakura about is the fact that, you know, she always has this, like, super excited reaction every anytime Sasuke comes home. The What the specific wording here is... Um, that uh, Sakura is able to stay forever a girl in love um, because um, 
it's always exciting for her when Sasuke comes home, which maybe isn't often the case for Ino and Sai, so, you know, that, that's just an interesting one. Um, <clears throat> uh, that's when uh, Sarada actually arrives into the flower shop and immediately is asking about uh, your forehead mark. Uh, tell me about the mitotic uh, regeneration jutsu. So this is what was set up in the last chapter, that there may actually be a connection between the karma mark and the meiotic regeneration jutsu, because the core mark, the kind of diamond, is the same core mark on the karma. So there must be some similarity between the idea of a body marking ability that when activated sort of spreads out. So what's the origin of that jutsu? And it may help to inform the more mysterious jutsu, that is the karma mark. So anyway, we then cut, we see Kash and Koji still in the village monitoring things. Um, so even with like Delta gone, he's still there sort of checking stuff out and we get his sort of inner dialogue about stuff of like, um, he anticipated Jigen making some sort of a move right away, but um, especially given that he must have found out about Borto also having a karma mark. So he questions what Jigen is up to. He should have made a move, but nothing's happened so far. Um, back with Naruto, um, we see that uh, Kawaki's noticing his karma mark is kind of, you know, something's happening to it. And when he looks down on it, the mark has changed. It's changed from the usual sort of uh, kind of diamond mark, the standard one, to this symbol that we've seen basically before. This is sort of the symbol that was on the wall in the cave where Sasuke was. And the most notable thing here is that this is the same sort of horn marking on it that uh, we saw of the Jigen Otsutsuki type character. Um, and we'll see it later on. So it, it's creating this significance between basically, it seems kind of all but confirmed here that the idea of the karma mark is that it is the sort of latent energy of an Otsutsuki left behind in a human or a vessel. And if they channel that energy enough, the the sort of visual aspect of that Otsutsuki comes through. That's why sort of uh, Jigen uh, has the ability to kind of create the horn that looks like it's why we'll see Kawaki did the same thing. And it's probably borderline setting up the idea that um, Boruto, if he uses the karma mark to its ultimate degree, will get sort of uh, visuals that look like Momo Shiki. So that's going to be pretty interesting if they ever fully confirm that. But anyway, we cut back to Sarada and Sakura talking about the Jutsu, and she just explains what uh, we basically got last time out in terms of the recap on this. Um, it's a Jutsu where in an emergency you can pull out incredible power by releasing all of the chakra you've been storing in the mark day by day. Uh, Sarada asks, you know, um, wh what, uh, why does it look similar to the Karma mark, you know, if it's related somehow? Sarada then explains what she knows of the history of the Jutsu. According to Master Tsunade, uh, Lord Fifth, um, it's a Jutsu that has existed for a really long time from the age of the Sage of Six Path. So it goes back all the way to basically origins of ninjutsu, origins of chakra within humans effectively and almost before that as well. So ancient sort of ability relating to the immediate Otsutsuki stuff coming into humanity. And I think that's an important thing to have in the back of your mind in all of this is that the reason our human characters throughout this whole series have chakra to be able to form their ninjutsu is that ultimately they are all kind of descendant from kind of, you know, Kaguya and stuff like that. And that that's where the chakra basically sort of came from in a way. And, and that ninja is, a lot of the ninja powers are effectively Otsutsuki stuff attached onto humans. So in that sense, the karma mark seems to be the almost super focus on that specific thing of Otsutsuki powers enhancing a human. But uh, that's just some speculation right now. We also get a fun scene here of Sarada and um, Sakura after this discussion, noting that like, oh, you have flowers, dad's coming home and they both get super, super excited. So um, excitement in the Sasuke family home because of his arrival back. Then Ino suddenly, you know, begins to panic a little bit. She's obviously the sensory ninja here. She senses an incredibly sinister chakra in the village. And then we cut back to uh, Kawaki and Naruto. So his hand is shaking. I think Kashin Koji is monitoring this and notices that it's happening as well. Then all of a sudden, 
stuff starts to come out of Kawaki's karma mark. A portal forms and Jigen just steps out right in the middle of this chapter. He's just right here. And suddenly the the kind of pacing of the series has accelerated from just, you know, you know, pretty calm, cool, you know, Kawa focusing on Kawaki, you know, getting in, in invested in like Naruto's family accelerating a little bit as we start to introduce the whole Otatsuki stuff with what Sasuke was doing in the last couple of chapters. Now all of a sudden Jigen is here and the plot is just right here. The fight that we thought would be like endgame is kind of happening right now. So um, really, really, you know, surprising that they're just going straight for it. But um, it works. It makes sense. It's not like it feels like they're just rushing this. This is something that made sense to happen. Um, you know, ultimately Jigen wants Kawaki back, you know, Delta couldn't get him back, he's going in to, you know, get him himself. So he walks through the portal, he's right there physically right now, and um, Kawaki is very, very annoyed at this fact. Kashin Koji is shocked and is immediately like, wait, what, how was he able to do this, you know? Then the, what was the whole vessel retrieval mission for if, like, Jigen could have just appeared before him at any point? So he uses a jutsu to kind of, uh, what does he do? He, you know, he, oh yeah, he uses his jutsu to kind of cancel the summoning of his toad, but Jigen sort of notices that the toad was there and then disappears. So the, the idea is that Jigen doesn't notice Kashin Koji himself is there, but the toad kind of gives it away. And the, the idea is effectively that Kashin Koji has sort of been outed as kind of working against Jigen. And he notices that himself. It turns out, it was my motives that were being scrutinized, not the other way around. So, uh, Naruto communicates with Ino that, you know, the, the police force should be on standby, but that Naruto says, I will handle this myself. Don't send anyone else immediately to to get involved in all of this. Um, <clears throat> Jigen acts really sort of cool under pressure here, and is just like, I apologize, Uzumaki Naruto. I didn't mean to enter your residence without removing my shoes. Um, and Naruto's just kind of like... Okay, I've been wanting to meet you. You're Jigen, right? Um, we see Jigen call Kawaki his wayward son. And that's, this becomes the kind of key dynamic, I think, in the kind of three-way conversation between Jigen, Naruto, and uh, Kawaki. It is basically Kawaki and his two father figures. One who he hates, one who he has come to really, really appreciate and care about as someone who actually cares about him in Naruto. And... Um, and what, another visual thing that I really like here as well is that they sort of symbolize that with Kawaki's arms. <clears throat> um, his, his karma mark arm representing the ability he hates, the, you know, the one his, the father, the person who kind of raised him, Jigen, forced this ability, ability upon him and like kind of ruined his life. So he hates one of his arms. But the other one of his arms he actually sacrificed for Naruto and his family. And then the new replacement arm that he has is actually powered by Naruto's chakra. And it's it's very kind of representative of like the difference in sort of father figures in his life. So that's a really subtle symbolism that like we haven't been getting up to now. But I think is really, really nice to have. Um, Naruto immediately gets kicked out of the way. And then these rods are kind of put through him. It's not the sort of six paths rods that just sort of immobilize you. These ones are specifically said to uh, drain chakra, so that's a, a difference thing. But it seems like Naruto is sort of out of action temporarily. That's how powerful Jigen is. Kawaki continues to say, "You are not. Uh, I'm not your son, and I never thought of you as my father." And um, obviously, back at the flower shop, we see Sarada leave and actually rush to actually try and help Lord Seventh and Kawaki. Um, so that is an interesting one that you do have her heading for the scene of this battle um, as well as the fact that they said earlier on like um, Sakura basically being I, I, I'm happy once he comes back safe, safely and it, it feels like they're putting up the death flags kind of for Sasuke a little bit here with the idea that Borto has this power we know Mitsuki has this latent power and as powerful as Sarada is we are sort of waiting for her to get the Manga Kyo Sharingan unlocked before she's sort of on that level. And for the most part, that requires her to experience a very, very heavy emotion, usually the death of someone close. And that seems to be what it would have to be here. 
I do think, like, if I remember correctly, I think there's at least one example of someone unlocking the Mangekyo Sharingan through a positive emotion. Or, no, I think I'm misremembering this, of it's actually... Sarada unlocked the Sharingan in the first place through a positive emotion of seeing her father. And so, they kind of are maybe taking a different path with Sarada. I remember, I'm completely misremembering that, that there is one example of Mangekyo Sharingan unlocked in a better way. I'm pretty sure I'm mixing it up with the Sarada, her first awakening of the Shar the, the base Sharingan, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what they're doing with that as they go forward. A lot of people have pointed out the idea of like, wait, even if she gets the Mangekyo Sharingan, once she uses it a few times, she'll damage her eyes and will eventually go blind and it'll be pointless, and she will effectively have no one's eyes to sort of transplant to uh, get the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Like, the only character left would be Sasuke, and it'd be a bit weird if, like, two kind of good characters do that sort of father-daughter eye transplant. So a lot of people have been pointing out this, the why they're bringing up the Thousand Healings Jutsu is that if Sarada unlocks the Mangekyo Sharingan, but also gets the um, uh, Myotic Regeneration Jutsu, that would that counteract the damage that the Mangekyo Sharingan does to itself? that she would use that, damage her eyes, but then the healings jutsu would immediately heal them. And that's a, that's a good way to get around the... basically use the abilities from both of her parents to get to the core, raw, powerful ability that you, you're kind of waiting for her to have. So, you know, she has the, the healing, the durability, but she also gets the power from being able to use the, the ocular jutsu. So, pretty interesting. And... Um, and yeah, this is where they point out the idea that Jigen notes, you don't care for the karma. And uh, Kawaki says, the annoying mark you put on me, tell me how to get rid of it. And Kurma actually talks to Naruto when he's still on the ground after all of this. And basically says, you know, you know pitiful, get up already. Um, and, uh, you know, you're shaming the title of Hokage. So Naruto goes, you know, Kurma, chakra mode, gets up. And as they're having... As Kawaki and Jigen are having their discussion, he notes, you know, so you like that toy right hand more than the karma bestowed upon you. This is the symbolism I was kind of pointing out. Uh, think about it. How can, you, how can you say for sure that it's not a device to monitor an outsider like you? In which case, there's really no difference between it and the karma. Um, and, yeah, th this, this is where K Kawaki gets really angry. He says, you know, shut up. Uh, the Hokage Lord Seventh is nothing like you. And um, we're getting the idea that he is putting a lot out there in this. He's really going against Jigen and uh, committing to how devoted at this point he is to Naruto, how important Naruto is to him as a person, um, which is very, very interesting. We see um, in the next scene, um, Miski and Borto are on their way back. Uh, Shikadai and Inojin notice them heading back, so there's the potential for a lot of characters to eventually converge in this fight. But it doesn't obviously seem like Shikadai and Inojin are immediately going to follow them, but it probably will happen at some point. Um, so Jigen is getting frustrated at this was the back talk from Kawaki here and says, I'm the only one who does anything that's truly for your sake. I'm no cowardly, peace-obsessed idiot like the Hokage. All he's concerned about is the peace of his village. I'll fix that unsightly arm when we get home. Uh, that hand is an eyesore. And Kawaki's response is to call him, Hey, Baldy, you're nothing but nauseating, uh, but a nauseating, worthless rat. Um, don't you dare disrespect Lord Seventh, as the karma mark activates to the point where the horn, the single horn that was on his mark, forms on his head. So this seems to be close to kind of like the ultimate form of the karma mark here. And Jigen notes upon seeing this, this is, uh, when did he advance this much? So even Jigen is impressed by the fact that with basically no training, he's used this karma mark. And clearly something about his mental state, him defending the honor of Naruto here has kind of activated this on a level Jigen hasn't seen before. But it's at this point Naruto arrives, really cool kick to uh, Jigen, sending him flying. At least showing that it's not this, like, wild gulf in power. Like, I don't really think there's much to take away from this chapter with regards to, like, the power level of Jigen versus Naruto. Because at least Naruto's kick 
sent him flying whereas I think otherwise like when this would usually happen like the kick wouldn't do anything but Jigen is actually sent flying here and um, so Jigen gets up and says very well I shall eliminate you Uzumaki Naruto and it's a setup for this fight is about to go down right here and uh, he seems to activate his karma mark sort of as close to full as possible he doesn't have the horns coming out but the the markings on like both sides across his face and stuff like that and Naruto's kind of flaring up his Kurama chakra mode so and um, yeah I don't know what exactly is going to happen here it feels a bit early to commit to like this is the fight and we will see a victor here directly and whatever but there's absolutely the possibility for a lot of big stuff to happen here the other thing I think a lot of people are pointing out is that wait did, wasn't Sasuke with Jigen in that kind of Otsutsuki area, cross dimensions with like the Tentails thing? What happened to Sasuke? Did Jigen just leave all of a sudden? Did he have a fight with Sasuke but beat him? Is Sasuke injured? Gone? What? Or is Sasuke going to show up at some point here? Um, a lot of stuff up in the air and I think it's a very very good chapter like I said a lot of different stuff going on the setup of like the meiotic regeneration jutsu for Sarada and the the setup of like where is Sasuke potentially and then just yeah the kind of surprise arrival of Jigen and this big fight that was set up for a while seems to be happening right now so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be interested to see in the next chapter just how far they go with this of like do we get the fight are we going to see them go all out or will something interrupt this? Because like, again, Kashin Koji is right there. I assume he's going to do something at some point. I, 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 I can see the reveal of who he is coming out at some point very soon. And um, because Jigen is here, he's activating his plan. I think Koji is going to have to blow his cover to um, uh, you know, help things out here. Because obviously... The characters here are the only characters who are truly going to be able to actually defeat Jigen. So, um, interesting stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say about this chapter. Uh, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on chapter 36. But that's been uh, my thoughts. Uh, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.